and welcome to the Hollywood Knits podcast where I talk about all things yarn, knitting, and crochet. Um, my name is Hilary Oliver. I am from the greater Toronto area in Ontario, Canada. Um, this is my first yarn cast podcast, yarn cast. I like both. <laughs> um, so as you can probably tell, I, I don't speak to cameras ever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I want to make a podcast as often as my schedule will allow. I'm not the fastest knitter in the world, but, um, I knit every free chance I get, I get. So I'm always knitting. I knit on my lunch break at work. I knit when I'm home every day. I knit on the weekend. If I'm going out anywhere, I'm knitting socks, a lot of socks. I love socks, um, sweaters, um, cardigans. I guess that counts as sweaters. Um, pretty much that's it. Shawls, cardigans, and socks. <laughs> those are my things um, last weekend I went to Rhinebeck with my friend Jamie and it was amazing we drove eight hours down through the border all the way down to Kingston where we stayed at a really kind of sketchy motel um, which was fine because we literally just slept in the queen beds that was all we needed um, the rest of the weekend we spent at Rhinebeck and in the surrounding area doing all the things seeing all the stores and all the things you can't see in Canada, but then also Rhinebeck. It was amazing. I am, I'm on a high still. I've been watching all of the recap videos and I, yeah, I'm just, I loved it. <laughs> I think, and I always kind of, I've always watched like the vlogs after and the right, like the recap Rhinebeck videos from everyone, Nitty Natty, uh, Andrew Mowry, um, Kristen Lair, like, um, Needles at the Ready podcast. Uh, I've watched like everyone's right, like right back recap and I realized I want my own. I need someone to talk to about all this yarn. <laughs> so, um, I think, um, I might as well just jump into my haul. I don't have a huge haul, but you know, I did, I did go over the budget <laughs> I set for myself. Um, today I'm wearing the Cristallo Tea by Knitting for Breakfast. I knit this back in August um, as my, and I'm glad I did this because I was thinking this might be my Rhinebeck sweater. And Rhinebeck this year in New York was gorgeous. The colors were amazing, but um, the weather, guys, the weather was 22 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know what that is, Fahrenheit, sorry. <laughs> um, and just like sunny all weekend long. It was beautiful weather. It was just enough weather, like it was just nice enough temperature to wear your Rhinebeck sweater without getting overheated. Um, so I'm really glad that my first Rhinebeck sweater was a t-shirt. Um, I knit this with uh, Yarn Indulgences um, Silk and Linen Blend. It was my first time working with linen and I've heard so many things about it being, um, the colorway is tea time, by the way. <laughs> I should say that. Um, clearly not great at this yet. Um, bear with me. I hope you're still here. Um, yeah, I, it feels amazing and it's so light and I'm really glad I got to wear it at Rhinebeck. I bought the yarn at the Kortha Fiber Festival, um, and found the pattern right away and I was like, I'm going to knit that. I love lace. I've never knit a lace yoke before. Um, and I did it. I put it off for like two months, I want to say, because I was just a little bit intimidated by the pattern. And then when I knit it, I was like, why? Why? Why was I intimidated by that? Um, it's so fun to knit. It was a real. It's a really great pattern. Uh, Cristallo Tea by uh, Knitting for Breakfast. Um, yeah, it it super fun knit, and I would really. I think I'm gonna do another one, which says a lot because I don't repeat patterns like ever. As I'm going to do this fall, it's gonna be a trend this fall of me repeating things. So. Um, bear with me. <laughs> there might be some repeat patterns here. Um, moving on. Um, so I guess my Rhinebeck haul, we'll start with that. Um, first thing I got is this little Notions pouch. Um, I, that was one of the things I went in for. I went in for, my goal was to get a sweater's quantity of yarn from Miss Babs. No surprise there. I'm sure you're probably bored. Please don't tune out. <laughs> um, so that's amazing, by the way. So I'm not, not saying anything I shouldn't be. Um, but this is from Three Bags Full. Uh, I've already subscribed or loved or whatever on their Etsy uh, page because my um, 
friend that I went with, Jamie, she loves this. And so if I can get myself one that's more suited to me, I mean, this is beautiful. I'm just not super pink kind of person. Um, I would love it if they put like a green. I love green. It's, it's a thing. Um, <laughs> it's the color of the decade for me. Um, but this, yeah, is a wonderful bag. I have all like my little darning needles in this front pouch that are easily accessible. Um, some stitch markers in here and some needle stoppers in here too. And then in here I have like DPNs that I need, uh, randomly some Luca like a needles that I should probably put away. Um, measuring tape, stitch markers and a little thing and my scissors. And yeah, this is just amazing. So I used to do, I used to get like little notion pouches that would come with project bags. And then I would just like have them in each project bag, but I obviously don't have a million DPNs and a billion scissors. Uh, and it got really annoying trying to find what I needed when I needed it. I don't want to leave the couch. You know, when I'm sitting down knitting, do I want to get up and go find the thing I need? No, no, we don't. <laughs> so this is perfect. I can just plop it in whatever bag or take it with me wherever I go and I have what I need. So that was my first purchase. It was definitely worth it. I think at the same vendor, Jamie got a gorgeous, gorgeous, like wax canvas bag. Um, it was one of those things. We both had this, um, same situation where we could not stop thinking about a certain object that we didn't get the first day and we just like beelined it back to get those things uh and jamie got her exactly what she wanted she got the right color and everything um that actually was my second purchase my first purchase of the day was this gorgeous bag i saw this i saw the actually the massive version of it and i was like oh i don't i don't need that i will never use it like, i won't take i won't leave it at my house because it's so precious it'll stay at my house um but then i saw she had a smaller one and i i had to have it it's just this like woven gorgeous material uh it's super canadian as you can see it's from i should probably look that at that um maggie's farm um, which is in New York, um, but half of the company, I guess, is situated in Kingston, Ontario, so that was really cool. I was like, no wonder it looks so Canadian, because half of you is Canadian, so this is, this is perfect. It's got a pocket on the inside with another tag, um, Bunda Flicka Designs by Maggie's Farm, and the inside is this just, this gorgeous floral material, very 70s on the inside, and then the outside is very, very Canadian. So this is my first purchase. Um, and you know, I did, I was open to getting a project bag there. I have more than enough cause I'm a very, like I have one shawl on the needles, one sweater on the needles, and then one pair of socks or one thing that I can take with me everywhere. Um, so I don't really need more project bags, but, um, that was, that was the thing that I, you know, <laughs> was open to getting. And when I saw that, I thought I will never forget my first rag bag if I buy that. You know, if I don't buy that, I will forget everything, of course. So, had to get it. Um, and my next purchase was my sweaters quantity at Miss Babs. So, Rhinebeck was incredible. We got there first thing in the morning, and we're used to waking up at like 5 a.m. for work. So, it was like kids on Christmas Eve. Like, we could not sleep. We were so excited. We arrived on the Friday night. Um, we had to leave late because of work. So unfortunately it's election time here in Canada for a provincial, I think, <laughs> I don't even know that's bad. Um, disregard that. Um, but Jamie had to work for that. So we, we didn't get to go to Wolven Folk and see the podcast or patio and do all that, but we, we will do that next year. It is going to be a thing next year for sure. And so, um, we arrived at like 10 PM, just enough with just enough time to get into our hotel room, check in. Um, so we just went right to bed. We could not sleep. We were so excited. Um, and so we got up super early, got went to Dunkin' Donuts, which we don't have in Canada. I don't think, uh, maybe in Toronto we do. Um, and we went right to the lineup. We were like one of the first 10 cars in the parking lot, which was insane. Very well done, by the way. They did a very good job at like ushering people in, like telling you where to go, getting you in a lineup. We didn't go in at the Red Barn. We went the one uh, entrance over. We weren't really sure what to do. We had no map. We had nothing yet. So we were just kind of like flying by the seat of our pants. Like we were just going where we felt like going. We really only had like we wanted. We didn't have specific colors or anything that we wanted. We just knew 
we wanted to get some things to mem like to commemorate the trip. So I did know that I wanted to go to Miss Babs. <laughs> that was a thing. And I did know that I wanted some sort of green sweater. I like everything green. Like it doesn't matter if it's like a dark forest green or if it's like a light pale sage green. I love it. I love it. And I don't have any full sweaters. I realized, I kind of thought to myself too, like I want gray. I have a lot of gray sweaters. Gray is not what I need. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I didn't have any. All my sweaters are pretty much are gray at this point in time other than this, but this is more like a top. So my first colorway, my first Rhinebeck purchase of yarn was Miss Babs. And it, this is just the most stunning green color. It's actually very similar to my bridesmaid dresses. I'm getting married in May. And this pretty much is the color of the bridesmaid's dresses. It is uh, in the meadow is what it's called. And it's of course, the yarn baby. My mother has been bugging Jamie and I for babies. And so we sent her a picture of us like, we did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got two of these and I'm not a huge fan of color work and, but I love the finished project. I just don't think I'm very much a process knitter. I knit because I love to knit. Um, but I have to enjoy the process. I can't just be knitting in the round stockinette the whole time. Like I'm just gonna get so bored. Unless it's like a hat or something very like the sock head cowl or in you know, the muscle burr hat. Like I get those things, like those are great, they're quick. A whole sweater in stockinette, I've done it, I've been there, not interested. Unless it's color changing and will pipe my interest to get to the next color, I don't really want it. So I decided this would be gorgeous because it has like the intrigue of the, the speckles and the variage, like the variating greens. It would be stunning. It would be stunning on, on its own, but, um, I would only be using like a quarter of the third Yowza, <laughs> the third yarn baby. And I know I could always use it for a hat or, you know, for color work in a, maybe a future color work sweater. But, um, I decided right then and there that I and it went in without a pattern as well. So that's probably should have looked at patterns. I have a million. I mean, I will always find something, but I ended up finding this beautiful two color sweater. Um, and I won't mention the pattern until I actually go to knit this. Um, but I then found this regular size DK weight skein, still at Miss Babs. This is a black water. It's gonna be, it's, it's just contrast color, probably in the yoke, and then bleed into this for the rest of the body. It makes me wanna cast on now, but again, like this, I'm intimidated by color work. Um, but I think I just, it's one of those things I'm just going to have to devote a weekend to learning the yoke and swatching it and doing it and like, like I did with this one and it won't be a problem because I loved knitting this. Um, and this is going to be the trend. Like Jamie saw her gorgeous bag and she had to go back for it. I saw one big yarn baby when I bought my green yarn. I wanted to limit myself to one because I have a lot of sweater yarn and I am not the fastest knitter in the world, so I wanted to limit myself. But I saw a big yarn baby of this gorgeous color, and I think it's a wild iris, which means it's not gonna get redone. It, this is it. This is all you can get of this gorgeous, oh, I just, I, I love it. I love purple, I love gray. I don't know why I didn't buy them. Why didn't I do it? I'm so mad. So the funny story is I saw this on Saturday afternoon. We missed that was the last place we went and then we left because it was so crowded. You could not, I think there's 2,500 people at Rhinebeck this year. You could not like move in the afternoon. So it, it kind of became not very fun at a certain point. And so we had made our purchases. We had considered going to New York City the next day and then as soon as we left and got a meal in our bellies and got some coffee and did our like shopping of American stores we don't have at home, we kind of looked at each other over dinner and we were just like, we're so sad it's over. Let's go back. So we did. We, again, it was like Christmas Eve. We could not sleep. We were so excited. But when we did fall asleep, we were exhausted. We were on our feet all day long. So we did eventually fall asleep and I dreamt of this yarn. <laughs> And a big yarn baby. I had a dream that I, which I would never do. I don't, I don't fight with anybody. I don't 
ever be mean to anyone. I'm always kind. It's like my mantra in life. My goal in life is to always be kind to people. But I had a dream. I had a fight with this little old lady over this big yowza. So I couldn't find it. Of course, we went back the next day. We were the first in the gates the next day. Very first people beelining through the red barn to get to Miss Babs. And of course, it was gone. Um, but I did get two of the, the mini skeins, which is 400 yards, I believe. Yeah, 400 yards, which is like a little bit more than I think a regular DK skein. So what I decided to do was pick up another two yarn babies. <laughs> and I'm going to try color work. Well, actually, the, the pattern I chose for this, and I, I could just say it because honestly, I don't have many options. This is not super contrasty with this, which means it's not going to be the best for color work. Where the purple hits the plum, it's going to disappear uh, and you're not going to see any design. So really, it's not going to work for the same uh, pattern that I was going to use for the green yarn. I want to actually look this up, um, what pattern I'm doing. Um, and I can't because I cut off the pattern. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't. I have it here. The Bloom by Marina Storm is this absolutely stunning. I don't know if it's going to show up, but it is so stunning. I'm going to do my colorway on the top, like flower motif, using Tarja to kind of blend in the body color with it. Um, I hate Intarja, by the way, but because I want the finished project so bad, I'm going to do it because I think that would be stunning and I would wear that all the time. So yay, second second sweater quantity that I did not plan on getting. And I also did, my last purchase was the Rhinebeck colorway. I had to do it, it is stunning this year. I don't know if that will focus. Um, it is, if you can see, it is just um, absolutely, stop looking at my face. <laughs> it is stunning, like look at this. Um, and I thought, like, I want a tradition for Rhinebeck since Jamie and I, we are, we're just so filled with joy and excitement and happiness after this trip. It was just so fun. It was so worth it that we're now budgeting starting like now. I think there is like 358 days <laughs> to Rhinebeck next year. So I think we are going to just budget, put away like $25 a month or $50 a month or whatever to help pay for the hotel and everything. Um, because I mean, it's just, and these sweaters that I'm going to make are going to be so special to me because they were purchased there. So yeah, I bought this guy and I wasn't sure what to do. I wanted a tradition to do with the Rhinebeck colorway. Um, and I thought Rhinebeck socks, but the reason it took me so long, it took me, I've been knitting for 20 years. It took me 20 years, 19 years to start knitting socks. And the reason I love knitting socks so much is one, I'm not a sock person. I don't like anything on my feet unless I'm like, I have to like in boots or something, um, in the winter. Otherwise when I get home, socks are off my feet and it's still the same case, mainly because my dog, as soon as I finish a pair of socks and put them on, my dog's hair is just, and he's white. So it's all over, <laughs> it's all over the socks. Um, but it took me so long to knit socks because I couldn't imagine spending so long knitting something that I'm going to throw my feet and step on. <laughs> so, um, but then I did it. I wanted to learn because there, I, I knew there were so many techniques in it that I think it would just be fun to do it. And I did it. I knit my first pair of socks with like Croy, cheap Michaels sock yarn. And I put it on my foot and I was like, this is magic. This is so comfortable. Heel flap and gusset is just like a hug to the foot. And I injured my foot really bad this year. So my feet need hugs. <laughs> they need lots of hugs. So I got home and I thought maybe I'll just make myself like a Rhinebeck pair of socks, but I usually have like 40 to 50 grams left over. So I don't know. I think I'm going to do hats. I think I might do muscle burr hats with this and split it into two. Um, so I can have, and then have a contrast color so I can have two Rhinebeck hats. Um, I did grab some sock yarn to go with these. Um, it's like a, I got some, it's from Color of My Fiber. She's in Montreal or Laval, Quebec, um, which I think is, I think it's a subsidy of like Montreal. I, I used to speed skate there when I did short track speed skating. Um, 
I like supporting her. She's wonderful. And um, I bought like a beautiful tweed green that would go really well with this. There isn't much green in this, but it would still suit it very well. And then I also grabbed um, a beautiful like mustard yellow color. So I might split everything and do two. And then the, whatever's left over the green and yellow, I can just um, do heat, like contrast in, or scrappy socks. I've never done scrappy socks yet. So I feel like at the end of the year, I'm gonna have some really fun scrappy socks from like all the socks that I knitted. Um, I think I have knitted like about 10 pairs. I knit um, for my, my fiance adores his socks. He waits like months to do his laundry and then he does it all at once. Like he'll do like 20 loads at once. <laughs> I don't know why he hates laundry. He hates it. And I, if I, if I had a normal job where I didn't work 12 hours a day, five days a week, I would do his laundry for him because he needs help. Um, but these socks, all his socks get scattered through the laundry. They don't have matches. He doesn't even care, but his hand knit socks that his fiance makes him, he makes sure they go in together and they come out together and then they get folded and they get put away somewhere special. He loves them. So I knit him, like every other pair of socks, I knit him a pair. So his take, he has big feet. He's a big man. He's tall. He's skinny, but he's tall. And um, yeah, so I, he's got big feet. <laughs> so his socks take quite a long time, but I finished another pair. It's with Knit Picks. I have no idea what the colorway is. Uh, knit Picks Hawthorne, and I just used the Croy black yarn as the contrast. Um, so yeah, I finished his first one and then I am just making very, very small progress on his second sock here. Um, yeah, so that's my first whip. I guess, I guess I'm transitioning into whips now. Um, this podcast is not going to be as organized as many of the su successful ones you've probably watched. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my first whip. Um, I don't have too many right now. I was frantically trying to finish my Rhinebeck outfit, um, which should probably be my next thing, but I, maybe I'll just talk about that at the end. Um, I don't have too much on the needles right now anyway. Uh, it's mostly just this cardigan that I've been working on. I'm designing it myself. I don't know if I am going to write a pattern. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but um, I will show you what I have so far. I finished the first front panel yesterday. It's got some uh, twisted ribbing on the side. I don't think it's going to focus to show you, um, but it is, it is pretty, it is just simple gray. I'm getting it with Patons Canadiana, um, worsted. It is, I did the back panel ages ago, like in April. It's this beautiful cable pattern that I, it's a regular Celtic cable, but then I added these bubbles myself because I just think they add a little bit more fun and intrigue. So back panel's done, one front panel's done, and I am a quarter of the way through my second front panel. After that, it's just button band and sleeves, which will be, I fly through sleeves. Sleeve Island does not exist for me. <laughs> I don't have Sleeve Island, it's not a problem. My camera just decided to quit on me as I was telling you all about my Rhinebeck sweater, which is just devastating, isn't it? <laughs> um, Okay, so where am I going to begin now? Jeez. Um, my Rhinebeck sweater is not out yet. Um, <laughs> it is the Arbor Sweater by White Owl Crochet Crow. If I haven't said it already, that's what it is. Uh, it is gorgeous. It is literally, all of it is lace. It's this gorgeous, intricate lace design. Um, can you see that? Like, it's stunning. It is gorgeous. Like I love this so much. So I had to have it. And, um, so I signed up for my first test knit ever. And I didn't think I would ever commit to a test knit, but I did and it's worth it. It's not out until December. I think the test knit ends the end of November. So I finished early and I loved knitting this thing so much that I was kind of sad when it was over. I thought, you know, like, yay, I get to wear it to Rhinebeck, but like, I want to keep knitting it. It's addictive. It was so fun to knit that I actually decided to knit another one. <laughs> so one of the um, test knitters, she was working uh, in Malabrigo Rios Sandbanks, I think, which is a gorgeous colorway. 
and I knit myself a hat for Rhinebeck, my other Rhinebeck kit, but um, I can't find it. Oh, ha, huh, right here. Um, this is the like reed hat, which I wore to Rhinebeck on day two when it was a little bit chillier in the morning at least. Um, absolutely beautiful hat. I had so many compliments on it, that and the color. Uh, it is a gorgeous color. I think it's called Cloud Sunshine, which is what my second Arbor sweater is going to be made of, is the Cloud Sunshine. I couldn't stop seeing it in this gorgeous color. Uh, it just does not do, the camera does not do it justice. It looks so muddy in camera, but it's just like tonal, dark, moody lavender. It is stunning. It is stunning, and I think knit up... So this was knit up, I should say. I'm horrible at this. I am so sorry. Um, I did have the tag. Oh, I knit this in Estelle Yarns Eco Harmony Worsted. Uh, this is a silver colorway. It is 55% organic wool and 45% organic cotton. Um, not super soft and not the best to work with. And I can already see after like one day of wear that it's felting a little bit. Um, not my favorite yarn, not my favorite color even. I just needed something to make gauge, <laughs> and so I ended up buying it. I kind of wish I just went ahead with the Malvigo Rios from the get-go. I didn't, but that's okay. Um, now I'm kind of just blending finished knits with everything. I finished this sock head cowl. I did it obviously very short for my girlfriend for her birthday. I was supposed to see her yesterday to give it to her and plans fell through unfortunately. So now I'm just, I have to wait until I see her. But um, that's actually, when I started knitting when I was nine, she's my best friend since we were like little seven year olds. And um, I would knit her a scarf every Christmas. Um, so maybe I'll just give it to her closer to Christmas when I see her. But um, yeah, she's in my wedding and I figured I hadn't given her a scarf in probably over a decade. So it was time she got one. She was overdue. Um, next finished knit uh, is this guy right here. It's just a plain beanie. I just did plain decreases at the crown, spiral, beautiful. The colorway, I can't even tell you. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Chameleon, I think. It's Malabrigo Rios. No, it's not Rios. Malabrigo, whatever their single ply worsted is, it's this um, in Chameleon. I did not order it. I ordered from Lovecraft's uh, Malabrigo sock in Ursula, which, funny enough, is the exact same color as this one that I fell in love with and dreamed about. I ordered it because I couldn't find it anywhere. And um, this is what I got instead, <laughs> which is even less money than the Malabrigo sock, but that's okay. It is what it is. Uh, I ended up using it right away. I, I was sick with COVID in September, early September. So I took the week off and I made, one, I finished my um, Arbor sweater. Two, I finished a hat, which was cool. I didn't end up wearing it to Rhinebeck, but it was cool. The last thing on my Rhinebeck, um, and my last finished object is this gorgeous shawl. I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> this gorgeous shawl, it won't even fit in the frame. Um, it's pretty, isn't it? It's so pretty. So I got the yarn from um, the Berry Fiber Festival from Orange Octopus Yarns. They're in Ottawa. Two lovely sisters, I think. Um, I could not, so I planned obviously to be at the Berry um, fiber festival for the whole day because it's it was wonderful they did a great job um, but I had other things come up we had a leak in our roof and we had to attend to it so I only got to make it there for like half an hour as quickly as I could like a lunch break I just ran to it and ran home so um, drove to it actually obviously did not run that would be a long run um, but yeah I made this desert weather shawl by whimsy north it is lovely I adore it. Um, I did it with, this color is um, Goofy Gray by Orange Octopus Yarns. And I do not know what this center color speckle variegated is, but they helped me. The two girls there are lovely. I adored them and they told me to post <laughs> about it and I forgot, um, but I will today. I will post a photo today. Um, 
I don't know what the middle color is, but they helped me pick it. And then I did pick a different color. It was like a rusty variegated, like the rusty version of this one to go on this side, but there wasn't enough connecting colors in the middle here. Uh, sorry, I did not mean to give you the finger there. <laughs> um, but it didn't really, well, I don't know. I was so on the fence about it that I decided not to do it. And uh, last minute, I thought I would put Malabrigo Sock Ursula in here. Um, and then I got the worsted skein. <laughs> and I was, I, I didn't know what to do. I had waited two weeks. I had watched shipping every day. It was stuck at the border for a week. And then it got to me and it wasn't what I needed. And I wanted to get this done for Rhinebeck. Um, so I ended up buying from um, a local shop and I got this Malabrigo sock Alice colorway uh, it's gorgeous and it worked perfectly and I, I like how the one side's variegated the other side is um, solid or tonal it's gorgeous I will never knit this again uh, it's a great pattern she like Whimsy North wrote it very well it, it's not a horrible pattern by any means it was just all that stockinette back and forth back and forth and fingering was just garter stitch sorry not yeah not stocking at garter, garter stitch back and forth worked flat was very boring um i did add a um built-in i-cord edging which uh looks gorgeous it just really finishes it off really nicely um so yeah that was my last little rhinebeck kit and um yeah so future knits to wrap this up quickly um I've decided, so I got home and, you know, I felt a little guilty. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make myself feel guilty for, you know, commemorating my first Rhinebeck, which I've dreamed of, by the way, uh, with yarn. So I'm not going to feel guilty about it. I only got two sweaters for one. I didn't get that much. It, some people did way more, way more damage than I did. So I'm not even going to worry about it. And no one should feel guilty for treating themselves. So, but I do have a lot of yarn. <laughs> That's the thing. I do have a lot of yarn. So Christmas is coming up. I need to knit things for people. So I decided when I was trying to put away my yarn, I ended up finding a sweater's quantity of this. And it's leftover from my fiance's sweater last year that I needed for Christmas. And it's this gorgeous teal color. Um, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. So I thought, what kind of, what kind of sweater could I knit myself? I could knit myself like a textured yoke and... I thought of all these things and then I realized this is a beautiful color for my mother-in-law. She would love it. So I'm going to knit her the Ingrid slipover. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to use this, which I think this is, I, I think I'll still have three stains left over so I could do some color work or something with it. Um, but first, I'm not really sure what her size is and I don't want to assume what her size is. She's also very particular. She likes things to fit properly. She does not like wool. She will only take acrylic. Um, so it was just, that's perfect for her. But I realized that in order to get her size the way she wants it to fit, I didn't know whether she would be a medium or a large, which I think, I think it's supposed to have eight to 10 inches of positive ease. I have a 38 inch bust, which might be bigger than her, might be around the same, I don't know. Um, but I don't know how she wants it to fit. She might not want the 8 to 10 inches. So I'm going to go and make my own uh, in the medium size, which will give me 8 inches exactly of positive ease. I don't think I would want more than that. And I'm going to do it in the same yarn, but in the dark, dark gray. It's pretty. It's uh, not so the same, of course. Um, there we go. It's so pretty. And I think it's like the exact same color that um, is in the photo on Ravelry for the Ingrid Slipover. So I'm going to knit this for myself first. That way, if I make any mistakes, hopefully I don't. Uh, they're in mine, <laughs> not hers. And it's not a selfish decision to knit my own. I think, one, I really want to wear this. I really want it for the rest of fall. I think it's going to be a very quick knit. It is worsted. It is just a slipover. It's just the best. So I feel like that could be something that I can knit up really quickly. And then I can have her try hers on. Or try mine on, sorry. And then she can let me know what she wants. If she wants that size or size up. Then that way she gets what she wants and what she will wear. And yeah, then everyone wins. And I knit two Ingrid slipovers, which I'm actually really excited for. I've been into all of the texture this year. All of the texture. So very excited about that. So yeah, I think that's everything. 
Uh, thank you for watching. If you're still here, I hope you are. Um, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And yeah, thank you for watching and happy knitting!